at. And it's a lot of fun. In my home waters of the Chesapeake, I've had a chance to do a fair amount of product testing. I'm afraid I did damage the dock, but here's Steve Short to show us how hard he can push the Windrider 16s. Note that the trimaran drives the downwind float underwater and clearly illustrates to the sailor when the boat is being overdriven. So push it a little harder, Steve. But the thing pops up and takes off. But really, how hard can you push it? Oh, the sail almost in the water. The boat not nose diving and the cockpit not filling with water. And she can still pop up and take off. Of course, one can avoid such shenanigans by reducing the sail area. It rolls up easily around the mast. And incidentally, reefing the sail in strong winds does not slow the boat down. But I'd like to interrupt for a second here to tell you about what I think is the real difference in the wind rider. It's their ergonomics. You've got a padded armchair. You're captured up to your rib cage so you can't fall out. It's very comfortable. You have your feet down in the hole on the steering pedals. And you have all the controls right at your fingertips. Because you're steering with your feet, you've got both hands free. So you can trim the main, tack the jib, pull it in on the other side. Everything comes right to you, including the controls for the outboard motor. Even for an old geezer like me. You know, I'm taking off my 70s. But I'm out here just having all kinds of fun hunting around. Explain that I'm half blind. I can't read, I can't drive, but I can still sail. And if I run into a dock with this thing, it probably won't matter. Ooh, I don't want to hit that one. Even wild, uncontrolled jibes and gusts are easy. There's just nothing more to it than that. You stay right here in your armchair. Sometimes I call it armchair sailing. But it has nothing to do with sitting in a chair and reading a book about it. You're out here in the real world. Here we go. Hey, I forgot to mention that when you're seated down there in that cockpit, you're always facing forward and your head is well down below the boom, so you can't get bonked on the head. So you can go into very shallow water, 16 inches, knee-deep water. And the great thing is, you stay right here in your padded armchair. You're not constantly preoccupied with the operation of the vessel. Sort of sit back and relax and let the boat take you on its own trip. Of course, you don't always have to be hot rodding. Sometimes I'd just as soon glide along the shoreline with my best friend and maybe think about visiting other shorelines or just watch the water go by and think about all the other waters. That's the thing that happens when you have a truly trailerable boat. These Virginia marshes are enough to give you big ideas about where to go next. And trailering a wind rider, you don't even need a launching ramp. Of course, it takes a little longer than that to get set up and on the road, but once you're out there, you can go 50 knots dead to windward down the highway. So, back in California now, with the 17-footers, Joe and I decided that we wanted to try to take a, a crack at the Big Sur coast. We wanted to camp underneath the famous Bixby Bridge, the backdrop for all those famous automobile ads. And there was only one way to get there, so 
with two 17 footers and four guys we set up again at Pebble Beach Carmel for, for our trip down the Big Sur coast we had a tremendous amount of gear to carry and we weren't sure how it was going to work out but it seems like the boat just swallowed up the stuff and when we finally got underway they seemed to handle the weight okay but now came the moment of truth we were gonna have to deal with the surf we were blessed with a mild surf and we learned our lessons the hard way first of all to keep the hatch covers on and it took four guys to manhandle one boat up out of the swash Now this was one dramatic campsite, but the beach here had such a steep high berm that we were not able to drag the boats up above high tide. So we just let them jill around down there all night. They seemed to be okay because we were in behind this rock. Two days later, when the weather cleared, we sailed out into a calm. It was the last thing we expected on this coast. But we had our little outboard motors, so we were able to investigate this area where a huge chunk of the mountain had fallen into the sea just recently. And we were able to prowl around the rocks and reefs that we had always enjoyed observing from above. Now we were able to get in close and examine the beaches looking for one that was deep enough to give us space to camp at high tide. This one was not big enough despite the inviting waterfall. But this one had last night's high tide line at the white stake. And the only footprints on this beach were ours. And on this beach. And this beach. We thought surely this must be camper cruising at its best. The trouble is it gave us big ideas. Now we wanted to go to Mexico and sail in the Sea of Cortez, an area so remote that we knew things could go wrong. So we loaded up the van and the boat and met up with our friends again. Let me introduce these guys. Quick one more time. Now that's uh, play. play. Oh yeah, it's got a... Okay, so if you hit the hold of it, you turn it on. Yeah, hold it. That's Steve Short on the left. Tim Ryan in the vehicle and Joe Hudson getting a lesson in how to operate his new iPod so we'll have tunes for the road. Okay. Bueno, bueno. Bonus, bonus. Climbing El Cajon Pass on Interstate 5 heading south. With the right music, getting through Los Angeles can be beautiful at times. But if you're towing a trailer, it can also be tense. And we still had a long way to go before crossing the border and getting down into Mexico. But finally, we were rolling through the greatest rock garden in the world. And the Baja Highway can be quite a grind and treacherous because of no shoulders. But we were glad to see this convoy of 10 Winnebago types going the other way. But what we really wanted was to get off the highway. It had been a bumper year for rainfall, so the desert was really blooming, and we even found standing water in the desert. <laughs> 